Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. This video is in response to a lot of the questions you guys asked about the first video I put up about this GWIC G2 Pro 30 watt fiber laser. I've been using this thing a lot and I am super impressed, but let's get right into the questions. I even made some notes. Diderlam1819 asks, are there safety features including, like a housing or so? Because if, even if you have any reflections with a 30 watt laser, it doesn't matter how far your eyes are from it. Very good point. And yes, they do give you a safety shroud. This guy right here. This thing has a couple of notches in the top and it's also got a magnet. So you kind of push it up, slide it in and it locks into place. This is an extension depending on what you're cutting if you need a little bit more or you can take it off and just use it like this. It also has a USB fan that plugs into the back of the machine that will extract fumes and help keep the lens clean. Safety is very important. Johnny the Kid asks, I would like to know how good the support is by this company. Genuinely asking and wondering. Other companies with comparable products are like $600 more. Any feedback would be welcomed. About to hit the buy button, but trying to figure out what to get when it comes to fiber lasers. Now, when I first got this machine, I did have a couple small issues and mostly were due to my own ignorance, but we got in a WhatsApp chat and they were very good. I was able to speak with their technicians and they walked me right through everything and it was really excellent. So my experience with them has been fantastic service. Like next day at the latest. Shoot GP asks, question, what is the life expectancy of a fiber laser? To clarify, CO2 lasers need the tube replaced every X number of hours. Do these fiber lasers have an estimated service life? I reached out to GWIC and I asked them, this laser module that generates the laser, what is the life expectancy? And it is 10,000 hours. That's a lot. Daniel Lively, 285 asks, if my sole intention is a maker's marks on knives, would you recommend this or even the 20 watt version or the two watt infrared slash blue diode option? To tell you the truth, the 20 watt version of the GWIC G2, not the Pro, just the regular G2, that would definitely do an excellent job of maker's marks, as does a two watt infrared laser. The blue diode laser also does a decent job, but on steel, the infrared does a better job and so does the fiber. The big difference is the time that it takes to do the etching, how deep you want the etching. And with a fiber laser, you can actually play with different frequencies and settings to put colors into your mark. So that's the big thing. Now, being that fiber lasers are getting close to other IR lasers and blue diode lasers, if it was solely for maker's marks, I would definitely opt for a fiber laser. It is just so much faster and it gives you more options with how deep you want it and even the colors. You can go for like more of a brown, a real black. You can make them more like a silvery gray color. There's just a lot more options when it comes to marking steel with fiber lasers. Donnie Sylvest 7521 asks a very good question. How long for maker's mark on a hardened stainless steel knife? Now, I don't have any hardened stainless steel knives currently. I have used this on them, but I never filmed it. But this is a knife that I made a very long time ago. This is hardened 01 tool steel. And in my experience, it doesn't matter what type of steels, whether it's stainless steel, a tool steel, a CPM steel, they all mark pretty much with the same amount of time. That obviously depends on how deep you wanna go. But I did this one earlier today and filmed it because I hadn't had a maker's mark on this knife before. So I put my mark right up in the corner there. I did one pass as a deep cutting, changed the frequency and did one as a cleanup pass. And for both passes, it was 15 seconds to mark this out. You definitely spend more time setting up your etch than the machine requires to actually do the etch. The print perfect types of materials I can engrave. I wanna be able to do tumblers, notepad, pen, frame. I don't know what type of a frame. Tumblers, yes, you would need a rotary attachment for this one. I don't have a rotary for this particular model. Um, notepad, this thing does not really mark well on paper at all. Leather, it kind of does. Wood, it kind of does. Results vary, but these things are mostly designed to work with different types of metals, precious metals, brass, copper, plastics, acrylics. It seems like natural fibers, it just doesn't do that well with. Okay, Sean Goodtime 5441 asks a very interesting question. Can I use this for doing jimping or checkering on the spine of a finished knife? Let's find out. Now, at the moment, I don't have any finished knives, but my experience in testing is that whether knife has been heat treated or not, it acts very similarly when it comes to 
engraving with a fiber laser. It may be a little bit slower with a hardened knife, but it will still do the same thing. I mean, these things, if you just keep letting them go and go and go and go, they just kind of keep eating away at the metal. So let's see if we can go ahead and do this. So I've laid out a simple grid of rectangles, spaced them out accordingly, and I've sized this for a quarter inch steel. Now this is a blade that got away on me. I was trying some compound grinds and just kind of ended up messing it up. So I thought this would be a great candidate to give it a shot. I initially set to do 10 different layers, but found out that seven was enough. And as you can see, it is actually doing a pretty good job at putting in the jimping. Now, if this were a finished knife, heat would obviously be a concern. So I took a heat gun while this was going and it was heating the spine up of the knife to about peaking at about 150 degrees. So Ultimately, I don't think that's enough to affect the edge of the knife, which is quite a bit further away. Immediately after I was able to pick up, handle the knife, it was warm to the touch, but it was certainly not like hot to the point of ruining the heat treatment. A quick little cleanup with a 3M bristle brush and it actually worked. That is impressive. <laughs> that is really cool. Highly, highly effective jumping. I don't think I would have ever thought about that. So thank you for your comment, your question. The answer is yes. You can definitely use it for jimping. And I do believe I'll do so in the future. Sean, thank you so much for that. That, that was cool. I can't believe it worked as well as it did. At first I thought, you know what? You're better off just taking a check ring file, one of these bad boys, and putting your jimping in pre-heat treat, which honestly probably would take about the same amount of time. But the nice thing is, is if you forgot to put jimping in, and it was already a heat treated blade, you're not gonna be able to put it in very well with a checkering file, but you can with a laser. Love that idea. T-S-G-E-N-T, -E can I engrave a silver cup? You know, like the one you get from your kids that hold about eight ounces of your favorite beverage? Yes, you can. Uh, likely you would want to use a tumbler, or sorry, a rotary attachment for this, but it does engrave silver, gold, you name it, metals. It's good for metals. Mike Kerrigan asks, this is a little different than knife making. I work in an aerospace machine shop. We need to upgrade CO2 lasers to fiber. The laser that we have now has a plus minus of about 0.125 inches. This allows us to mark on slightly curved surfaces without having a fourth axis to rotate the part. What is the focal range on that laser, that one? Also, if you have a piece of pure nickel, it would be cool to see a test on it. Unfortunately, I do not have any pieces of pure nickel. In regards to the focusing distance, you want to get it as close as possible. However, I have marked things like the, the shaft of screwdrivers. I put my name on there and obviously there's a discrepancy. I couldn't put a figure on it, couldn't put a number on it, but if I'd wanted to mark this Apple Pencil, I could do so and make it decent size and it would turn out quite well. 125 thou, I would say probably about the same for this. Hard to measure though. Enrio3 asks, Jeremy, will this be making your maker's mark on your knives going forward? Yes, absolutely. I'd like to make nameplates for labeling around the shop. It would work very well for that, and it is fast. You get the computer set up, you just type what it is. I've been doing that a lot lately, and just, and it's crazy. Like, if you want to fully fill in something, it might be like 30 seconds to a minute, and that's for a decent size, but it is incredibly fast, and... It is handy. Also, can you make plaques to sell like your holiday stands? Yes, you definitely could. Goat Scratcher, fantastic username and a fantastic question. Can you finish cut guard openings? That is cool. So when you're fitting up a guard to a knife, you know, when you get to that very last little edge, it's so nerve wracking with files. You go too far, you've ruined it. Not far enough and it just doesn't quite fit. My answer to this would be yes, you can, but it would require quite a bit of fixturing. You would need to make sure you can hold it exactly, line up the laser exactly, and you could indeed use it. So say if it were a rectangular fit that you were going for, you could just draw out the exact size of rectangle you wanna cut and do like a fill, and it will do it, and it gets very, very crispy edges. Fixturing, I think, would be the key to this, which is also where 3D printing comes in handy. I've made several fixtures for different things that I engrave a lot of, and I just 3D print them, you can bolt them down to the plate and just click, boom, click, boom, click, boom. Works fantastic. And the last question comes from Loki Ironworks 6503. How durable would the color engraving be? I.e., how long would it last? And would it affect the temper of the knife to where it makes the edge retention useless? 
So two questions here. The first one, it lasts a long time. When you put the colors, you are actually discoloring with heat the surface of the material. And that's something that it's not just gonna rub off. You might be able to get it if you took it to a buffer and really went after it, but you're basically removing that very top surface level of the material. In regards to the edge retention, as in the case of this maker's mark and the jimping that we put on this blade, the heat is localized right here. And the heat that I was able to sense on this steel was never more than 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't enough to affect the heat treat. Now, if you're doing colorations over the entire thing and you're putting like colors right down to the cutting edge, potentially, potentially. But if you stay away from the cutting edge, you're putting some nice fancy color engravings, a picture up here. I do not think it would affect the edge retention at all. However, I would like to do some future experiments with some more technical equipment so we can actually test it and measure it. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers.